You know, it, it it it's almost fitting to me that we ended up losing that game on a missed field goal by the greatest field goal kicker in the history of planet Earth. Because if there was anything that could have gone wrong in this game when Georgia had the ball, it did. Uh, hats off to South Carolina. Listen, this wasn't a uh, th this wasn't a fluke or or a lucky win. I, I, was, I said it at halftime. South Carolina looked like the better team and was outplaying us, and that was the case for this entire game. And when Sa on the live stream on the uh, that I was doing during the game, when South Carolina missed that field goal there in the second overtime, I uh, I even said I said, man, this is this this isn't right. Uh, Georgia doesn't deserve to win this game this way like this because South Carolina down to their third string quarterback injuries all over the field on both sides of the ball for South Carolina they played better the entire game they dominated both lines of scrimmage I, I, and then they missed that chip shot field goal in the second overtime you know and, and so it looked like Georgia uh, was going to have a chance to win there uh, of course they ended up missing the field goal too but I, I said at the time this um this is it's it's uh you almost like, I felt bad. Like, if South Carolina loses this game, it's a damn shame because they were clearly the better team. And I, I'm, I'm just kind of glad this happened now so I don't have to spend the rest of the season uh, hoping and wishing uh, like I've spent the last two seasons hoping and wishing just so we can get our dreams crushed uh, in the national championship game or the SEC title game. I'm just glad this happened now. This offense that Georgia's trotting out on the field every week is absolutely pitiful. Um, I, you know, I, I've been saying this over and over. Maybe this will be the game that will wake some of these other people up and they'll finally start realizing, um, you know, it's 2019 and absolutely nobody is impressed anymore that Georgia can line up against teams like Murray State, Arkansas State, Vanderbilt, um, Tennessee, and just out-talent them by running the most basic, simple, middle school, vanilla ice cream offense known to man. Watch the LSU-Florida game tonight. Ask yourself, is LSU a better team this year than they have been the last seven or eight years? Yes. Why? They're running a grown-up offense. And as long as Georgia continues, um, I mean, just, it, it, and it's not, it's no one thing about Georgia's offense. It's not just Jake Fromm. It's not just the wide receivers. It's not just James Coley. It's not just Kirby Smart being too heavily involved in the offense. It's all of those things. It's the overarching philosophy. It's the conservative nature of the Georgia offense. It's the, it's the pass routes that we run. It's the route trees that we have. It's wide receivers not being able to beat one-on-one -on -one coverage against a good South Carolina secondary, but not elite. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Uh, and again, that's not a knock on South Carolina. I don't know how many different ways I can say it. They absolutely manhandled us in today's game and was and were the better team and deserved to win. Um, but when you look at some of the other teams that you do consider to have elite secondaries, your Floridas, your LSUs, your Texases, uh, teams like that, it, you can't beat man coverage against these teams with below 500 records. And, and I, why is that? We've got a roster full of four- and five-star wide receivers. I mean, you just can't convince me that every single receiver we have is incapable of doing it. It's, it's scheme and philosophy. It's not emphasizing and taking enough time, uh, whether it's in practice or whatever else, to develop a legitimate passing game. So when you come out and you decide you want to try to win the game by throwing the ball, you can't do it. Jake Fromm improves to what, 0-5 now in games where he's attempted 30 passes or more. So again, when we play teams that are vastly inferior talent-wise, yes, we can go out, lean on them for four quarters, run the same running play up the middle 40 times, dink and dunk passes and swing passes and jet sweeps and three-yard curls, and beat them 40 to 14. Yes, when we play a team that is even remotely close in talent or the running game is not working or we decide we're going to throw the ball 40 times for no reason, this is what happens. It's just been proven time and time again. It took LSU seven or eight years to wake up from that nightmare and decide they finally needed an offense uh, that was fit for the 21st century 
and I don't know how much longer Georgia's going to have to wait. I don't know. Uh, this this is a top 10 defense Georgia has. Georgia's defense is good enough to keep them in every game. Georgia has a national title winning defense. This offense is absolutely pitiful, embarrassing, and sad. And, and honestly, it's shameful. How much more talent could we possibly have on offense than we have right now? We couldn't be more talented. We couldn't be more talented. Everybody and their brother has been telling us we've got the greatest offensive line in college football. we got a roster full of NFL running backs. Some of you tell me Jake Fromm is the greatest quarterback known to mankind history, that he's a first-round draft pick, uh, that he's the best quarterback in, in America. Uh, you, uh, wide receivers, five stars everywhere. Demetrius Robertson, George Pickens, uh, you know, everywhere. So at, one, at what point do we... Do, do, do we say, okay, we have to start doing something different here offensively? Like I said, it took LSU seven or eight years. I don't know how long it's going to take uh, hard-headed Kirby Smart. Um, Kirby Smart found about nine different times to lose this game. Let me tell you something about Kirby Smart right now. But we have A-plus talent on both sides of the ball, without question. We have A-plus recruiting across the board. We have C and D coaching. And we have F, in-game coaching. Kirby Smart has not improved one iota when it comes to in-game coaching from 2016, his first year, till now. The end of regulation in this game, the end of the second half, was probably the worst coached end of a half I've seen in my entire life. You've got one of the greatest field goal kickers Georgia has ever had, and you screw it up royally so bad through coaching that he doesn't even get a chance to kick the field goal. You, you don't send him out there to attempt a 60-yard field goal. Now, are the odds good that he would make a 60-yard field goal? No. Are the odds better that he would make a 60-yard field goal versus Jake Fromm throwing a miracle 50-yard Hail Mary? Yes. Yes, they are. Um, so, you know, Tyler Simmons... Now, that last interception in overtime was not Jake Fromm's fault at all. I mean, he was a perfect pass. It hit Tyler Simmons right in his hands, right in front of his face, and he basically tipped it right backwards to the uh, to the defensive back. So that wasn't on Fromm or Kirby. That was 100% on Tyler Simmons. But the facts are what they are. Fromm had four turnovers today and, and the one touchdown at the, end of, at the end of the second half. But listen, um, it, it's just... Uh, if you're wondering why I'm not mad or yelling or screaming or whatever, I did plenty of that during the live stream. But the thing is, I knew midway through the second quarter it was going to take a miracle for Georgia to win this game. So I've had about three hours to sort of prepare myself for this loss. So, nope, there won't be any broken TVs or anything like that today. But this Georgia offense, uh, if it doesn't get its head out of the, out of the sand, uh, this will not be the only loss we have in the regular season this year. I can promise you that. To anybody in the comment section that's going to say, well, Georgia always loses a game in the regular season, and that kind of wakes them up. Yeah, uh, they usually lose a game in the regular season to a top-10 team like Auburn or LSU last year, okay? LSU last year, Auburn the year before. Again, I, 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 I'm not knocking South Carolina, but they're clearly not a top-10 team, so this loss is not comparable to those other two. Plus, those other two were on the road. This was at home. Um, this was just an epic failure. Uh, defense played well. Special teams is a joke. Um, we, you know, we, we fair caught every single punt today. Every single one. Every single punt uh, we fair caught. Now, some of them needed to be because the defenders were close to the guy, but other ones there was nobody within 10 yards. So what does that tell you? The, the return man is being told when he goes out onto the field, just fair catch it. Forget, forget trying to trying to uh, flip field position by getting a decent punt return. Just fair catch the punt. They're obviously being told that. Um, the, the coaching on this team is below average, period. Period. There's no other way around it. The development is not there, and the in-game coaching is some of the worst I've seen. Kirby has not improved or learned any lessons in terms of in-game coaching, especially, especially at the end of close games, okay? Go look at the epic disaster that was the Alabama game last year with the stupid fake punt call. Look at what happened today at the end of regulation. It, it's just, uh, he, he, thinks he's the, he thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. Maybe he is, 
but he might need to check at who else is in that room then because he might be surrounding himself with stupid people if he's the smartest person in that room. But changing, uh, changing is not the worst thing people can do, okay? Changing, a lot of times changing is the best thing people can do. Nick Saban changed after multiple national titles when he looked around college football and realized that he needed to figure out how to get a grown-up passing game and score some points if he wanted to keep winning. He wasn't too hard-headed to do it, and he had a whole bunch of national titles in his pocket. Kirby, you ain't got jack shit. Nothing. You got an S you got one SEC title and you think you're too good to change. Better figure something out, buddy, because Georgia's not going to get any more talented than they are right now. They're not. How many multiple top three recruiting classes do we need in a row? We're not going to get any more talented than we are right now. We're not. Okay? We are infinitely more talented than South Carolina. They were better prepared. They were better coached. They were more motivated. And they outplayed us all game long and deserved 100% to win that game. Period. Period. So uh, congratulations, Carolina Jackpot. Yeah, you're the only uh, South Carolina video maker um, that I know. Not going to congratulate any of the type of trolls. Uh, but uh, shout out to Carolina Jackpot. Uh, you guys subscribe to his channel if you're not already. Check out his post-game video. I can't wait to watch it myself. Um, and congratulations to the South Carolina football team, the better team. Uh, you know, nothing else I can say. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I could talk for an hour about how bad Georgia looked today, but most of you watched the game, so you already know. So it just is what it is. People are going to say, well, it's just the one loss. Again, this loss isn't comparable to the two Georgia had last year, okay? When you look at the games reigning on Georgia's schedule and you wanted to rank South Carolina somewhere in there, it was about the fourth or fifth toughest game left. So, season over.